Auto Sampler is a great tool available in MainStage and Logic 10.5 and above. It makes creating a sampler instrument super quick and easy, and it works with any MIDI capable instrument, whether it's software or hardware. First, let's take a look at sampling an external instrument. So I have my Moog Minotaur, which is an analog bass synthesizer. And let's say I want to sample this using Auto Sampler. In order to do this, I need to establish both audio and MIDI connections between the instrument and logic. For the audio signal, I have the output of Minotaur going into the input of my audio interface. And I'm setting this audio interface as the input source in Logic in Preferences. For MIDI, I'm using a USB cable coming out of the Minotaur going directly into my laptop. If your instrument requires a MIDI cable like this, then you can use an adapter that will connect this to a USB cable or you can connect it through an audio interface. Once I've connected my synthesizer to Logic, I need to create an external MIDI track. I can do so by going to the channel strip of an empty software instrument track, instrument, utility, and choosing external instrument. I'm going to choose mono because Minotaur is mono. And here I can set the details for the MIDI connection. For MIDI destination, I'm going to choose Moog Minotaur. And for the MIDI channel, if I have multiple instruments connected to Logic at the same time, I can specify a different MIDI channel for each instrument. But right now, Moog Minotaur is the only thing that's connected to Logic, so I'm going to choose all. For the input, I'm going to choose input one. And now let's load Auto Sampler. Auto Sampler can be inserted as an audio FX. And here's the interface. So the first thing you want to do is to press the keyboard here and make sure that you hear the sound, which will prove if you have set your audio and MIDI connections properly. You also want to make sure that the input level is healthy. If it's too quiet, you can increase it using this input gain slider. But if it's too loud, it flashes in red. It means it's clipping, so you want to avoid that. I'm just going to put it back to where it was. And now let's take a look at these controls. First, I'm going to determine the key range for sampling. I can do that either by dragging these handles left and right, or I can specify notes here for start and end. This is a bass machine, so I'm going to set it for lower octaves, maybe right here. And next, I need to choose how frequently I want Auto Sampler to sample the notes. So right now it's set to sample every six semitones, and this means that Auto Sampler will sample these keys highlighted in blue with an interval of six semitones. Now, this depends on the instrument that you're sampling, but if you really need to make it realistic, you can always bring this down to one semitone and it will sample every note. Five or six semitones is a good place to start, however, so let's do that. The number for round robin determines how many times each sample is captured, but for most cases, sampling each note once is good enough. So I'm going to leave it to no. Moving on. Sustain determines the length for each sample. And Apple recommends 10 seconds for most pitched instruments. So for drums and percussions, you can set this shorter, but uh, let's leave it at 10 seconds. And also keep in mind that recording long samples will give you more flexibility because you can play either short or long notes once you have the sample instrument. I can also set how many velocity layers I want in Sampler. For the demonstration, I'm going to choose three so I can show you what it will look like once we finish this process. And once I do so, I can select the velocity level for each layer, and that will lead to velocity response set to custom. On the right hand side, I can choose whether to loop the samples or make them one shot. 
One shot is suitable for percussion and drum sounds, but if you want to loop your samples, for example, if you're making a pad instrument, then you can set a surge or surge with crossfade here. This will make auto sampler look for optimal loop points. Other options give you different algorithms and styles of looping. So if you're interested, you can experiment with those. And lastly, these percentages for loop start and loop end will determine in which area auto sampler is going to look for the loop points. 100% equals the total length of the sample. So for example, if I have a 10 second long sample and if I set the loop start to 40%, then it means auto sampler is going to look for the loop start point after four seconds. All right, once I'm done with all these settings, I'm going to click sample and it will open up the saving location, which is by default, a folder called auto sampled. This auto sampled folder is existing within the audio music apps and sampler instruments. So we can open the finished instruments in sampler. I'm going to name this Moog Acid Bass 2 and click start. You can see that the blue notes are sampled for 10 seconds each and three times each note because I set three for the velocity layers. It's going to continue sampling this way for the key range I set. All right, so it finished sampling. Let's close this and load sampler. So from the preset menu within Sampler, I can access the instruments I created with Auto Sampler under Auto Sampled. Here's the instrument I just created. And you can see that Auto Sampler map the samples to the appropriate key ranges and also created three velocity layers. Now this is ready to be used as a software instrument. And if I want to further manipulate the sound, I can do so using Sampler. In addition, if you want to locate the samples and not the patch, you can go to Audio Music Apps folder, Samples, Auto Sampled, and choose your instrument folder. And then you'll have access to all the recordings done by Auto Sampler.